Hi, I'm John Otto. I'm Category Manager at Perch for Trucks, specializing in wheel end systems. We're going to talk about some nuances with the hub pilot system. Every one of the systems, the spoke wheel system, the ball seat mount system, and the hub pilot all had nuances. They all wear. There is a loss of tolerances within some of the, uh, the components. So it is going to happen over time. The case of a hub pilot wheel, because you have a right hand thread on the right hand side of the vehicle, it tends to want to move off. Whereas in a ball seat, it's got a left hand nut. So there are some solutions um, that have come to development over the years. And the first one uh, is known as the wheel check. Now this is an indicator only that the nut has moved. It will tell you if a nut has loosened. So if a nut is loosened, it's backed off, it may turn like that. That's all it will tell you is that that nut is already loosened. This is known as a safety lock. And once again, it cannot be retorqued when it's installed. This is known as a safety lug lock. Developed in Canada, used all over the world, used by many fleets in Atlantic Canada and Ontario. It basically provides a resistance between the two nuts to prevent them from moving. It ties one nut to the other, so it is stopping the movement. They are very, very effective in preventing that nut from moving, and remember, you can retorque that nut with them on. You don't need to tie this one to this one. You can strictly tie these two, these two. Sometimes you do see it this way. Great product. This is a thread pitch gauge and it's uh, designed for the M22 by 1.5 pitch uh, thread pitch of a metric stud used on a hub piloted wheel system. And it's designed, it has little teeth and you can set it on the stud and, and you can see if there's daylight you can tell whether this stud has been stretched or not. Every time you torque a wheel you stretch that stud. Sooner or later, as that's been on and off and torqued so many times, it can develop cracks. That's one of the reasons they crack. There's a, a, a point where it's going to break. And this can help measure it. It just sits strictly down on the teeth like that, and you can have a look. One of the other nuances with the hub pilot wheel system is the loss of tolerances in the hub. And you may get a, a shimmy, a vibration, and, and many people think it's the tire or the wheels bent. Sometimes you can take it away with a skirt nut or a sleeve nut. These are skirt nuts or sleeve nuts. This was the original one, and it's a six mil. It's just got a little collar. It was developed in Canada. There's a large Atlantic Canadian fleet that I believe used three on a wheel and took a shimmy out of the front end of most of their vehicles. What it does is the hole in the in the in the bolt hole in the in the wheel is slightly larger than that M22 stud, and this slides on and helps center that wheel on that stud. Now we're saying it's a hub pilot system. It, it, it is, but as I've said, it, loss of tolerance. This will help take clear up some of that tolerance. So that's a six mil, that'll just sit inside and do in, in center that one. So you, you two, four, you don't need one in every spot, but they do work. These are longer ones. This you would use with two, dual aluminum, and this one you could use with dual steel or an aluminum front. So there's different lengths. Uh, the six mil was developed in Canada and then the other ones were developed subsequently. There are times when you uh, want as you install the wheel and the drum that you um, struggle to get the wheel centered. Uh, these are wheel centering pins and they're threaded, they just don't slide on. There are some that slide on. These ones actually thread on the uh, metric stud. It allows you to, to properly center that wheel as you slide it on. Typically you use a set of three, you'd, you'd set them in the appropriate positions around the wheel and you, you can remove them very easily. There's a hex on there. And it just helps you pilot that, that wheel in. 
Uh, you may have a dual load here. It's just another uh, uh, feature of help for installation going, you know, in centering as possibly there's a loss of tolerance. And a lot of people get concerned because there's space here. And you have to remind them that it's hub pilot system is piloting on those pads back inside the package. But um, sometimes this, um, this calms them and uh, gives them a good idea and helps them realize the center. And then you may add a, a sleeve or a skirt nut opposite it as you put it together and then you know you've got it centered properly. So these are available. They're available in a couple different lengths. Um, valuable little tool for every uh, technician to have. I've had numerous calls over the years, but the hole in my brake drum is bigger than the stud. Well, that was because it was a hub pilot system. Um, but it is possible that if the wheel assembly, the stack was to come loose, and you had a, a severe braking incident, that you could have brake shear. In other words, that this drum, the brake would grab and, and shear the studs. I've not heard of it, but it is a possibility. So there's some products developed, and we'll show them here. This is a drum spacer. So basically it just slides on over the stud and takes up that space here in the drum hole, in the hole of the drum, between the drum and the stud. They come in, in a couple different sizes. The front, there's a set of six, so you put three on a wheel. The drives and, and, and duels, uh, set of 10, I believe. So it's called a drum spacer. Different sizes, different thicknesses, heights this way for the different thicknesses of the disc of the drum. So that's a drum spacer. It, it helps center that, the drum. This is an internal sleeve. A portion of it centers the drum and a portion of it centers the, the wheel. Handy little um, devices that have been developed because of the nuances in the system because of loss of tolerance. This is a wheel guard. The wheel guards have been around for a number of years. They started, uh, were first developed for the ball seat mount, 10 hole hub pilot wheels. Uh, they're available for different sizes, eight hole, 10 hole. Uh, there's even some eight hole for smaller vehicles. This happens to be the normal one for the 10 hole hub pilot. Uh, not quite sure what the material is, some form of plastic. It will withstand heat up to 475 degrees. Thus, you do not put it between the drum and the hub, as the brake is sitting here and extremely creates a great deal of heat. But you do put it between the drum and the wheel. You could have dissimilar metals like the cast iron of the drum and the aluminum of the wheel. Then you'd put it between the duals if there were duals. It, it, it does work very well at preventing corrosion. It can prevent pitting of the wheel, which can affect the clamping force of the, of the stack in putting the assembly together. So these are very important and really should be used every time, except in high heat applications such as refuse trucks, fire trucks, transit buses, a lot of stop and go, high heat situations where if they were to be used and they melt, you would lose clamping force and possibly the wheels would come loose. Thank you for joining us for this session where we discuss the nuances of the hub piloted system, the little intricacies and, and uh, problems that will uh, uh, pop up and the solutions that are available to, uh, to correct those problems. Uh, if you, should you have any questions, uh, please contact one of our branches or uh, check us out at www.partstrucks.com.